Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter and today I have a corner to corner blanket pattern to show you guys. So this one is really fun to make. I'm super happy with how it turned out. It's a giant daisy blanket. Um, the written pattern for this one is pretty big so I can't like hold it up and show the entire thing but I have pictures of it on my blog. The pattern is free on my blog, the full written pattern and the graph and then I also have the PDFs available in my shops for this as well. And then the line brand kit is a available for it also and I'll just link to all of that in the description below. So if you're not familiar with corner to corner, you might want to check out how to do a little practice swatch before you get going in this one. But once you get the hang of it, it's really easy to do. Um, and I kind of walk you through how to get started on the blanket, how to change colors, and then how to do the corners of the blanket. So majority of this, you'll be going through it on your own. So you'll have to follow the written pattern in the graph to um, make sure you have the correct amount of squares for each row. And then if you get stuck at the corners, which is where a lot of people do, then definitely watch the video so you can figure out how to do that. And then if you need more help with how to keep your yarn organized when you are changing colors and um, bringing in different bobbins and skeins and balls of yarn and stuff like that. I know there's tons of tips, um, videos out there that share lots of tips and tricks. So I definitely recommend Googling that. I am not gonna show you like all the different bobbins and um, skeins attached to the yarn. So if you want to see how people usually do it, then you can go and search that. But for example, you'll need like a different ball of white for the petal and then a different ball of blue right here and then a separate ball of white for this next petal. Like so when you're going at an angle, um, you can easily change colors without having to cut and join new yarn. Um, so I definitely recommend um, learning about that before you start. That way you can minimize all the cutting and joining and just make it as easy as possible on you. Um, but other than that, this is really straightforward, simple, corner to corner. And I hope you guys enjoy the pattern and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time. Okay, so for our blanket, you're going to need three different colors of yarn. I'm using Line Brand's Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling. And I have the colors Baby Blue. You're gonna need eight skeins of this. And then you're going to need four skeins of the white and just one skein of this lemonade color. And the exact yardage for that is available on my blog if you need to check that out. And then you're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and then a needle to weave in your ends. So we're going to be starting off with our main color, baby blue, and beginning with a slip knot. So wrap that yarn around your fingers and then just grab the yarn and pull it through the loop and then just enter your hook and then tug down on the tail to secure it to your hook. And we're going to be starting off our blanket in the bottom right hand corner. So to begin, you're going to be chaining six. So just yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook a total of six times. And this first portion right here is our very first increase square on row one. So you're going to yarn over and then in the fourth chain from the hook in the back bump is where you're going to be putting your hook. And we're just working a double crochet. So yarn over again, pull up your loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two, and that was one double crochet stitch. And then you're going to do the same thing in the next two chains. So again, yarn over and in the back bump, insert your hook. And if you don't wanna do it in the back bump and you just prefer working your stitches into a different part of the chain, that's fine as well. Just try and keep it all uniform and the same. So there's our second double crochet. And then we're going to do the same thing in that final chain for our third double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook, and then finish off your double crochet stitch. And this completes our very first square. So this was our first increase square. It contains that chain six that we did, which is now a chain three on the edge and then the three double crochet. So that's our very first square and that completes row one. So now we're going to be turning our work and working row two. 
going to be starting off with another increase square and this is what you'll be doing at the beginning of all of the rows until you reach the first corner and then I'll show you how to decrease. So again you're going to chain six and then we're just going to do the exact same thing that we did before and work a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So rotate it and work your hook into that back bump and then just work your first double crochet stitch and then you're going to work a second double crochet stitch into the following chain. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then work your third and final double crochet into that very last chain. Again, make sure you don't skip over this one. It can be hard to see sometimes, so just don't forget that last chain. You should always have three double crochet stitches um, with each square that you're making. So that was the first square of row two, and now this is what our regular squares that you're not increasing will look like throughout the blanket. So you're just gonna insert your hook into the chain three space from the row below and slip stitch to join and then chain three instead of six. And now we're just going to work three double crochet stitches all into the same spot. So this square that we're making right here is what you will be working in the rows that aren't along the edges. So this is just a regular square. And then that finishes off row two. So you can see there's our corner and then row two. So you can kind of see the diagonal look that we are working up right now. And to finish row two, just turn your work and we're gonna start row three. And row three is going to start the exact same way with an increase square, so chain six, and then work your three double crochet stitches starting in the fourth chain from the hook. So once we start off that beginning increase square, we're just gonna work a regular square. So slip stitch to join in that chain three space from the square in the row below, and then chain three, and work three double crochet stitches all into the same spot. So you're only going to be chaining six when you are on an edge square where you increase. And so when you're in the middle of the row like this, you're just gonna work a regular square. And then we're gonna finish off the end of the row with a regular square as well. So slip stitch over to join in the chain three space and then chain three and work three double crochet. Okay, so now we're going to be starting row four. So the same as you did for row three, you're going to start off by chaining six and working your double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook and each of the remaining two chains. So this was our increase square. And then you will continue by working your regular squares across. And at the end of this row, we actually need to bring in color B, which is our white color. And I will show you guys how to do that, how to join in new colors um, for the blanket. So go ahead and work the regular stitches across the row and then we will bring in our second color. So there's a couple different ways that you can change your yarn colors and I will show you both of those. So I'm gonna do it the way that I don't normally change colors for this first square just because I thought it looked a little bit better on this um, edge square at the end. So we're gonna finish our third and then tuck that yarn to the front of your work, slip it into the chain three space and then just lay the new yarn over your hook and pull it through to finish off that slip stitch. And then just kind of tug the tails down to secure it. And now we will be using our white yarn as the working yarn. You also wanna make sure that you bring the tail of the white around to the other side as well so that both of the tails are on the same side, which will be the back of our work. And then you can just finish the square like normal. So chain three and then work three double crochet all into the same space. And now we have our new yarn color on our hook. 
and you want to make sure that you just keep the tails whenever you join in yarn just keep the tails always on the same side so that when you're weaving in ends they're all on the back of the work and it's just nice and organized so I'm going to tuck these out of the way but I'm not going to be cutting off the blue because we will be changing back so we are going to be starting off row five with white as well so you can do the chain six and work your first increase square of the row using your white So we're only going to be making one square with the white color before we change back to the blue. And then I'm going to show you the other way how to join in the colors, which is what I normally do throughout the entirety of my blanket. So this color changing technique coming up is how I usually do it unless I'm on an edge color join, which is what I showed you first. And now I will show you the different way and how I do it throughout the blanket. So instead of doing the final pull through with white, we're going to drop that and pick our blue back up, place it on our hook and just pull it through that last double crochet from the previous square. And then you can see it makes the strand stretched across the next square where we need to go. And to hide that, we're just going to work our stitches directly over it. So slip stitch into the chain three of the next square and then work your chain three and your three double crochet around this blue yarn as well as the white in the square. So you can see when we're working our stitches, it just hides it and it will stay underneath our three double crochet so that you can't see it on the back side of the blanket. So go ahead and just continue working these regular squares in the blue color across the row. And then when you get to the end of the row, turn your work and start off the next row with your increase square and work your way back towards the white. And then I will show you guys how to change colors again. Okay, so once you've worked your way back down, we're going to switch back to white. So bring the yarn over to the front because now we're facing the back side of the blanket. Drop the blue, place the white back on your hook and pull it through that final pull through. You can see it leaves um, this pull of yarn going up to the square, which is completely normal. It blends right in and it's only on the back side of your blanket. Um, but this is how I change my colors to help prevent having to cut and join yarn so much. And it greatly reduces the amount of ends that you have to weave in as well. So I finished off with that white square. And now we will be continuing doing the same thing throughout the graph. Row seven, which is what we are starting now, begins with a white square as well. So you can start that off with your chain six and your increasing, and then switch back to blue and work the blue down the rest of the row and back up. And then I will show you guys how to cut and join the yarn. In some spots, you will need to cut and move your yarn over as well as having multiple balls or skeins of colors going at the same time so you do not have to cut and join but for this next part you will and then we will keep this same ball of yarn going for this petal um, of this flower down in the corner so go ahead and work this first square in white and then switch back to blue and work your way down Again, make sure when you're switching your colors out that you tuck the tails on the same side of the blanket. And then I'll show you again here one more time how I like to bring my colors over when there's just a gap of one square. And then again, you can see the blue yarn that it pulls over just like it did before in the previous row. And we're just going to work our stitches directly over that to hide it underneath and continue down all the way now with our blue and then I will show you how to cut and join the yarn in the next row. Okay, so I'm in the middle of row eight now and for row eight, it has us do four blue and then four white. And so you can see that our white yarn is all the way up here um, at the top of this row. And so we don't want to 
drag it all the way down to where we are because then it just makes a giant mess and it'll pull the blanket. So if you're at a position like this and you can either bring in a new ball of yarn, but in this case, we're um, on the same petal and we're going to keep this yarn going um, for this section. So I just went ahead and cut the yarn um, from the previous row there on my last white square that I made. And then I'm just going to place it on my hook and finish that last pullover with the yarn and then continue on with the white to keep going. So now we'll keep this white ball for this petal. And then in some cases you will need to bring in separate skeins of yarn so that you do not have to cut. But that is how you can cut and join if you find that you need to do it some point throughout the blanket. Okay, so I finished that row with the four white squares and now we are in the middle of row nine and we did five white squares and here I am changing my colors again. So I just pull through with the blue, tug down on that tail to make sure that it's secure and that you don't have any loose stitch stitches at the top and then just continue going, slip stitch into the next square and work your regular squares across and then um, work your way back down and I'll show you again one more time how to change colors when we get back to the white. Okay, so now we're on row 10 and we've worked our four blue squares and we need to switch back to the white. So I'll show you another view of the color changing. So I'm just gonna pick up the white yarn, finish that last pull through with the white and drop the blue onto the same side as the tails of yarn. And then again, you can see the yarn that it makes stretched across and we want to hide that. So you're just gonna slip stitch in to the chain three space and work your three chains and three double crochets directly over the yarn and you want to make sure that you're not pulling it too tightly you want to make sure that there's enough slack in that yarn that's stretched across so that your blanket doesn't um, pucker or get all wavy so make sure you leave lots of slack for that piece of yarn before crocheting over it Okay, so that is the basics of the corner to corner and to get you started, I will show you when we reach the corner how to start decreasing, but for now just start every row with an increased square and then work your regular squares across changing colors how I showed in this video. And I also recommend to keep track of your squares if it looks like you've messed up somewhere, I recommend double checking on the graph as well as cross referencing with the written pattern and make sure that your square on your blanket look exactly as they do on the graph so that it doesn't mess up your future rows. So just continue going as you have been and I will meet you back here when we reach the first bottom left corner of the blanket and I will show you how to decrease. Okay, so I have already ro worked row 60 from left to right on the graph and we are currently on row 61 from right to left and we've reached the corner. This little white square at the very bottom corner of row 60 is our corner. And so that was our very last increase square. And now when we finish row 61 here, we no longer want to increase when we start the following row. So we're at the end of row 61. I have one more square of this row to do, but instead of it being next to this corner, it's gonna be going straight up because we're going to be decreasing. So our last square will be finished on top of this corner square here at row 60, and we will start working our way up to form the rectangle shape of the blanket. So I will show you how to do that here and how to um, finish off this row and start our decrease rows on this side. Okay, and the last square of row 61 is white, so I've gone ahead and yarned over and pulled through um, this final pull through with the white color instead of the blue, and then just tug down to secure and tuck all the tails in the back, then just slip stitch in to the chain three space. So again, this is our final square. So slip stitch over like normal, work your three chains and your three double crochet, 
And now instead of slip stitching over again into this corner square, this is our very last square. So you can see it's stacked on top of the corner square there, which is what we want because we're no longer increasing. So do not do any more squares. You'll be so used to going over and working this final square here, but don't do that. And instead we are just going to slip stitch to that chain three space to join. And then instead of working a square, we're going to just turn our work and slip stitch up to start the next square of the next row. So slip stitch into the chain three space like you normally would. And then instead of working your square, just turn your work and we will be slip stitching up the um, side of this square here. So we're going to be working our slip stitches in to the tops of the double crochets from this last square. So we've slip, slip stitch to join and then turned our work. And now you're going to work your first slip stitch into the top of that last double crochet that you made. Make sure you're not doing it too tightly. Slip stitch over again into the next one and slip stitch a third time into that next double crochet. So we have three slip stitches. And now normally we would just continue on with our next square with this yarn, but this one is a little bit tricky because we're actually changing colors here. So I'm gonna show you how to switch colors here on the edge. So normally you would just slip, slip stitch into the chain three space as well and continue with the same color but I promise this is the only tricky part on this corner of the blanket when we're working the decrease squares. It won't always um, feel this tricky with the color changes. You'll have mostly be blue on this side once you get past this flower. So instead of working that slip stitch with the white, we're gonna go ahead and pick our blue back up because we have to make a blue square now. So go ahead and drop the white, make sure that you keep it on the same side of the work as your tails, and then pick your blue back up, and then insert your hook into the chain three space, yarn over and pull the blue through um, to join in and work our next square. So when you work your first square of the row, it's going to be the same as just a regular square. You're going to chain three and then just work three double crochet all into that same um, chain three space where you joined in. So again, our decrease square is slip stitching to join in the chain three space from the row below work three slip stitches up the sides of the square and then a slip stitch into the chain space and then you work your square. So again, on this left hand side of the graph, the bottom left corner area, you will always be starting this side with a decrease now because we've already reached the corner. But on the other side, on the upper right area of the blanket and graph, you will still be increasing because we, because we have not reached the upper right corner yet. So until you reach that second corner, you'll still be increasing on the other side, which is starting off with the chain six. And then on this side, where we've already hit the corner, you will only be decreasing. So keep that in mind as you go and continue on as normal. And then I will meet you back when we reach the upper right hand corner. I'll show you how to do that corner as well. And then it will be all decreasing on the ends from there on out. Okay, so now we are at the end of row 68 of our blanket and when we're in the upper right hand corner of the graph and this square here is our corner square. So no more increasing on this side of the blanket either and so now we'll be doing a decrease square. This side's gonna look a lot more normal because we don't have to change colors right away so it will be easier to show you how to do that. So after you finish row 68 with this final square, we're just going to turn our work and again we're going to select stitch up the side of the square so in that very first double crochet work a slip stitch and then work a second slip stitch in the next one and a third in the next one and then you're going to slip stitch over into the chain three space of the square and then just start off your next square of row 69 so that was our corner so you can start by chaining three 
and then work three double crochet all into the same spot. And it is that simple when you're not changing colors. And um, you will be doing this now at, on the ends of the rows throughout the rest of the blanket. So no more increasing on either side of the blanket. You will always be decreasing when you start the row. So again, you slip stitch those three times up the side and slip stitch into the chain three space and work your squares as normal. So continue going with your blanket as usual. Um, no more increasing, decreasing only. So your blanket will be going this way now instead of working your way up. We've hit both corners and you'll be decreasing by one square with each row that you go. So it's nice and quick from here on out and it will get quicker with every row. Continue changing colors as normal and just continue following along with the graph and the written pattern. And I will meet you guys back here when we get to the end of the blanket and I'll show you how to do those final couple of rows and how to tie off as well. Okay, so now we are at our last two rows of the blanket. We finally did it. We made it. We're at row 126. You're going to work your squares as normal here. So just work your chain three and three double crochet. You're going to do it in this one and then slip stitch over and work your second one. So only two squares for this row. And then I will show you how to do this final square at row 127 as well. So slip stitch over into the square from the row below and turn your work. And this is our last and final decrease square. So work your slip stitch into the next three stitches up the side and then work a slip stitch into the chain three space. And now finish off by doing your chain three and three double crochet all into the same spot. And to finish, just slip stitch to join in the chain three space from the row below. Turn your work again. And then we're going to end by working three more slip stitches. So one slip stitch in each of those three double crochet. And then a fourth and final slip stitch into the chain three space. And then you can just cut your yarn and tie off and pull through to finish. And that is it for the blanket. You could add a border if you would like, but I am doing this one borderless. I don't think it needs it. Um, but if you want, you can use any extra yarn that you have and work a single crochet border or any type of border you want around the outside. So the only thing we have left to do now is weave in our ends. So we're just going to be using our yarn needle and then any tails that we have hanging out, we're gonna weave through. I like to do it at least three times. Um, I also find that it is easier to hide them and weave them in when you're working through the bottoms of the stitches. So you can see I like to pull it through the bottoms of the double crochets. Um, I just think it hides it a little bit easier. So I've pulled through twice and then I'm going to pull it back the other way, making sure you insert your needle through a different stitch than what you popped out from so you don't get it, um, so you don't pull it back out. And just do this with every single tail that you have and then you can go ahead and cut the yarn um, to finish that off and then just repeat with any remain remaining tails. And that is it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this blanket. Thanks for following along with me and for the support as always. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I will do my best to help. And of course, I will see you guys in the next video.